Dante Tank Davis. Let Shakur Stevenson. Devin Haney, no. Y'all ain't built like that, bro. Hey, what's good with y'all, man? Uh, reports are circulating. I saw this on Barbosa Boxing. I saw this on uh, Boxing News 24. Earl Spence returning January to fight Sebastian Fundora um, in Arlington in Cowboy Stadium. Just tell us that you know the damn Cowboys ain't going to make it to the goddamn playoffs without telling us you know the Cowboys ain't going to make it to the playoffs, Jerry Jones. We ain't expecting no home playoff games in January. We ain't expecting no goddamn playoff games. Earl, Sebastian Fundora, go ahead and book your shit. Go ahead and book your shit. Y'all good. <laughs> Y'all good. We straight. <laughs> that what Jerry Jones said. He said, I'm going to get some money in January at this goddamn stadium one way or the other. Oh, it hurts to be a damn, da a damn Dallas Cowboys fan right now. But this is a boxing channel. Let me get off my soapbox. Smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Share the video. Turn on your notifications. Catch me live Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday night at 7.30. I'm also live every uh, Sunday morning with KQKC Boxing Network. Sunday morning is 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. I ask you to join the channel as a member. Drop super chats and super thanks. When you come by the live streams and videos that we're doing, hit me up if you want to debate. Knockoutboxing86 at yahoo.com is the email address. Let's get it cracking, though. So... Earl Spence returning to the ring against Sebastian Fundora. That will make it a, let's see, July to July, 12 months. August, September, October, November, December, January. It's an 18-month layoff for Earl Spence. And he had a similar layoff um, when he fought Ugas and then fought Terrence Crawford. From fighting Ugas to fighting Terrence Crawford. Um, so, obviously, right off the bat, in this fight, as an Earl Spence fan, you obviously worry about the punishment that he took against your Dennis Ugas. You all you obviously worry about the change in trainers because he's not training with Derrick James anymore. Then you also worry about the inactivity. A lot of red flags for Earl Spence Jr. Then also, Earl Spence Jr. getting a title opportunity um, to fight for potentially two world titles. We'll see what the WBO does. Um, but... At minimum, he'll be fighting for one in the WBC. But the idea of him having an opportunity to fight for um, a world title coming off of a loss um, doesn't sit well with me. And I'm a diehard Earl Spence fan. We got a fight going down this weekend. Michaela Mayer um, is going to be going against Sandy Ryan for a welterweight title. And Michaela Mayer is coming off of a loss to Natasha Jonas. So she got a shot at Natasha Jonas' IBF welterweight title. Lost that fight, and then now she's going into an immediate fight for a world title against um, Sandy Ryan, the WBO champion. Shit's crazy, bro. Shit's crazy how, depending upon who your promoter is, depending upon who you um, are signed to, what networks you have relationships with, winning and losing doesn't even fucking matter. You just get to keep fighting for world titles. Hell. They tried to do the shit for Josh Warrington, but the IBF said, fuck no. That, that shit would have happened last weekend. Josh Warrington was supposed to be fighting Anthony Kakase for his IBF 130-pound title, but the um the, the goddamn IBF said, no, nah, they did the right thing. No, nah, bro, you can't fight for no world title. You just lost your last fight. Warrington had lost like three of his last five fights or some shit, including losing his fight right before Kakase at a lower weight class, and they was about to make him move up. Move up. And still get a world title shot. Then you got motherfucking um, Joe Cordina. Was about to get a title shot against Shakur Stevenson. Coming off of getting knocked out by Anthony Kakase. So, while I got mad love for Earl Spence Jr. Um, and there's no disrespect to um, any of the fighters that I mentioned. Boxing got to clean that shit up, bro. We can't keep having motherfuckers lose regardless of who it is. Whether I like them or not, bro. At least make them fight in the title eliminator or something. The only time that that shit is kind of cool is if you got a rematch clause. Like you the A-side, like an AJ, right? You got a rematch clause. Okay, you got a rematch clause. 
big ass money fight, um, you get your get back because you've earned that right being a big name in the sport of boxing. Or you were a world champion that was able to negotiate a rematch clause and then boom, you got your rematch clause, get an opportunity to try to get your belts back, get your status as champion back. But the fighters that I mentioned, like Josh Warrington, uh, Michaela Mayer, fucking um, uh, Joe Cordina, um, these fighters, like even Earl Spence right now, they're getting opportunities to fight for world titles, a lot of them in completely different weight classes against completely different people coming off of losses. And in the case of Earl, bro, a badass loss. In the case of um, Joe Cordina, a badass loss. Like, the, some of these people are getting opportunities to fight, and they got beat convincingly, bro. And then they're moving up in weight and still getting a world title shot. So um, I just don't think that's fair to, to the sport of boxing. But Earl is a big-ass name. You know that we're going to pack the house here in Dallas, man. We're showing up and showing out for Earl. It's going to be a big-ass fight when he fights Sebastian Fundora. But so many question marks. So many question marks about his wear and tear, his new trainer, his inactivity. Um, and this is do or die for him. This is do or die for him, bro. Like, this is either a big fight that he wins on a path to other big fights moving forward, or this is his last hoorah. If he loses to Sebastian Fundora in Dallas Cowboys Stadium, then I honestly think it'll be because he took a shitload of punishment because Earl tough as fuck, right? And the way that that fight is going to play out, for Fundora to beat him, he's going to have to put a whooping on Earl. That'll be back-to-back -back whoopings. Um, a lot of wear and tear. He already had the car, the car, the major car accident and some minor car accidents too. The eye surgeries and shit. Man, it's piling up, bro. His age, say 34, 35 years old. His body feeling more and more like it's closer to 40. Maybe even on the other side of 40 when you consider all the things that he done put his body through. Um, you know, things that he can control and things that he can't control. But they went ahead and made the fight. And I'll say, look, he a pay-per-view attraction. He a live gate attraction. We're going to give him a shot. Because the flip side of that is, the flip side of that is, Earl can show up and show out. And while unlikely, I want, I want people to understand what I'm saying. I think that what I'm about to say is unlikely. It's unlikely, bro. It's unlikely that Earl goes through camp, has a phenomenal camp, becomes extremely strong, makes the weight easy, doesn't have any issues, the inactivity don't get to him, the um the punishment of of what Bud Crawford did to him don't get to him. All of that shit is highly unlikely. But what needs to be said is that if Earl Spence is anywhere near himself, then he should dog walk Sebastian Fundora. But the main the main thing is when is the last time that we've seen Earl Spence look like himself in the ring? Mikey Garcia, even Mikey Garcia, Earl boxed well, but he wasn't the same guy that we saw fight Kell Brook. He didn't look, he didn't look as strong. And a lot of it, maybe he made 147 and stuck around at 147 too long in, in the, um, the, the, the fights being at 154 pounds can do him a lot of justice and allow him to be way stronger than what he's looked like in recent fights possibly that may be a possibility however bro however what is his chin like now what is his appetite for this fight because when earl is earl the things that are great about him are how strong he is his punch placement and the fact that he don't stop working had one of, in his apex one of the best work rates in boxing behind a strong stiff jab and he coming to, to to dog it out and beat your ass yeah that that's him when he at his best that style though it already ages pretty quickly but that style with the wearing chair that earl got on it i want y'all to understand something 
Earl could be done, bro. He could be done. I hope he not. That's my guy, bro. We rooting for him. But the punch that Ugas caught him with, the punch that Bud caught him with, Bud caught him with every fucking thing. So saying Bud caught Earl with an uppercut, it's like saying he breathed on him because he caught him with every punch, jabs, straights, hooks, uppercuts, body shots. It was bad. That was a bad night, bro. It's a bad night for Earl, bad night for those of us that are fans of his. But Bud Crawford did his thing. You got to give him that respect, bro. You know what I mean? Um... But Fundora throws a mean-ass uppercut. He throws a nasty fucking uppercut. And Fundora is now tested against Lubin, against Mendoza, against um, Tim Zhu. Um, he's tested now. He's confident. And even if Earl is working at his work rate, Fundora can match that shit. Plus he's six foot five. Plus he's six foot five. Then we gotta know. We gotta ask: Is Earl's power gonna carry up to 154 pounds? Because the guy that beat him, Bud Crawford, did he look the same at 154? Did he look at 147? So it's so many things to unpack with this potential fight announcement. Um, but the main things that I and I leave you with this to just sum up the video. The main things that I think, um, as a boxing fan, that you if you're not asking yourself, you're doing yourself a, a disservice by analyzing this this fight. Number one. Earl's new trainer. Number two, um, Earl's inactivity. Number three, um, Earl's wear and tear and his ability to, to, to take punishment. And then number four, will he still be hungry? Because to fight how you fight, you got to be hungry. He was already saying things like, you know, I, I, I got to fight a certain type of fighter to get myself motivated, get myself up for a fight. That sound like some dog shit. Like, that sound like you a dog. Like, not dog shit like bad, but that sound like some dog. Like, I'm a dog. But when you really peel it back and think about it, the motivation to be great, the motivation to prove that you the best day in and day out, shouldn't matter who you fighting. Shouldn't matter, like, who in front of you. That, that dedication to the sport, that dedication to your craft to just be the best should just have you training your ass off and, and ready all the time so you ain't you ain't got to try to get yourself prepared. Earl hasn't done that, in my opinion. Early in his career, yes. Later in his career, not so much. So um, I'm excited to see Earl Spence back in the ring. Um. I'm happy that he's getting this opportunity for his career to become a two division champion, um, possibly unified if, if they don't strip Sebastian Fundora. We'll see what the WBO does. That's a tricky situation because Bud Crawford is a WBO mandatory, but can they strip Fundora if Bud Crawford is openly and publicly and behind the scenes doing everything he can to move up and wait and fight Canelo Alvarez? How can you strip Fundora for fighting Earl if Bud Crawford ain't even trying to fight Fundora? So, that we'll see what happens. We know at minimum Earl will be fighting Fundora for his WBC belt. As more news comes out, we'll see if the WBO decides to strip Fundora um, of his belt, uh, of his WBO belt, and, and and allow Bud Crawford to either be elevated or fight for the vacant title. We'll see how that shit plays out. But for me, bro, um, this is a crossroads moment. This is, um, you know, that moment for Earl. You know, Anthony Joshua, Andy Ruiz, part two. Um, Anthony Joshua Alexander Usyk Part 2 um, Deontay Wilder Versus um, Jay Lee Zhang It's one of them ones where, Matter of fact I ain't gonna put the AJ shit on it You know what I mean Cause AJ was younger And I ain't gonna put that on that This is really that Deontay Wilder um, Jay Lee Zhang fight Where you like Alright bro if, if you got anything left, bro, now is the fucking time. Otherwise, it's downhill from here. That's where Earl at, in my opinion. At three, four years younger than Wilder, but it's that serious, in my opinion. Hey, bro, all right? It's that time. Show up and show out. Or get your last bag like Danny Garcia and get on down. Now, I know Earl ain't going to quit like Danny Garcia, but 
I'm just saying, this is it, bro. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Earl Spence, Sebastian Fundora, January, Dallas Cowboys Stadium. Can't wait to see how it all unfolds. See y'all soon. Peace. <laughs> Devontae Tank Davis. Let Shakur Stevens hit. Devin Haney, no. I ain't built like that, bro.